Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 career mode here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go racing at Road America back on a road course here as a push towards the end of the regular season is well underway. Just under 10 races left in this regular season. We currently find ourselves in the playoffs not by a whole lot here we've got some work to do to stay comfortable now we are the last driver in by just a few points here as we were touching down in the road america area now not a whole lot uh, around this area but uh, ready uh, for the twisty bends here in this quick trip to 50. we have a guest a project 91 driver back in the field here today the first new driver since kimi raikkonen of course piloting that 91 car uh, we have shane van gisberg in there from the uh, Australian V8 Supercar Series that will be out on track here today. I'm a big fan uh, of as SVG uh, as I've just gotten into actually supercars uh, at the beginning of this 2023 season and if you don't watch supercars find a way. Uh, absolutely marvelous stuff. I can't catch a lot of the races because of the time zone differences of course but so much fun to watch and I can't wait to watch Shane in his path in this career mode and in real life with NASCAR as well. I think a lot of people look at the surface area Shane Van Gisberg and then say, oh, he's just a road guy and he only does V8 supercars, so what's the point of trying to get him to go full-time when he's probably going to suck on ovals? But I challenge you uh, to look at his resume. Shane Van Gisbergen has adapted tremendously to anything he's won in, or driven in. Um, he's, of course, won championships, so many races in V8 supercars, uh, but he's won in open-wheel formula-style cars. He's won in rally cars. He can win in anything. So uh, the guy is, is insane. He's won in dirt oval sprint car races as well. Check out his resume. The guy's a real deal. We are here, though, in qualifying. We'll see what Shane Van Gisbergen can put up on the board, but we'll see what we can put up on the board here now as we head down towards turn one. Uh, our road course record this season has been quite interesting as well. Mid-Ohio, we got a pole. We ran well until we spun ourselves up, but still got a respectable finish. Sonoma recently there. Well, uh, that one had its ups and downs, and it had a wild last lap with contact with Austin Sindrick as well. And there's that big incident there, and Christopher Bell ended up getting the victory as he continues his top five streak. I was uh, hoping that we could get a really just a, a top 20 uh, qualifying effort. I felt like personally was a pretty uh, realistic objective here and it was an okay lap here a couple moments you know we're going a little bit wide and whatnot but not too time uh, costing here now through the right kink we call it now having a bit of a lift go down into third gear then he jumped back up into fourth gear now into Canada corner I guess you could uh, call it my home corner uh, but through the final turn right hander bit of a mistake right there uh, missing the apex as well but to the line after jumping up the hill we're going to cross the stripe with a 206065 and that puts us in a very risky respectable actually p13 so uh quite happy uh with that effort now as we'll take a look our teammate of almondinger uh right there with us in p14 now as you can see austin hill zane smith towards the bottom bubble wellness as usual a rough qualifying effort at a road course not surprising there truex maybe a bit of a surprise down in 26 mcdowell down in 20th uh larson there running at the top 10 shane van gisbergen p5 in his debut jensen button as well a very strong effort from him in p6 but on pole chase elliott by a whole tent over ross chastain as we get ready to go racing here from road america hello race fans and welcome to your coverage of our half of the nascar season we kick things off in road america for the first of three road courses in the final push towards the playoffs we got a fun race too rick the longest lap on the calendar and we've got some curveballs too yeah we have a few international road ringers here today 2009 f1 world champ jensen button and who's the other one jeff uh we have a supercars superstar shane van gisbergeren Gisberger, sorry. Gisbergen, Jeff. Gisbergen. We'll just call him a SVG. program uh, this year of course uh, AJ plays a huge role in that so let's go have some fun today yes sir stick with it today and be ready to race with these road ringers 
You here, myself, and our crew chief there of Stevie Speed. Be ready to race with these road ringers, of course, with both Jensen Button as well as Shane Van Gisbergen and starting uh, a little further up the road now. As you can see, Justin Allgaier failed technical inspection uh, as well as Eric Almarola with an engine change after qualifying. They will be starting at the back of the grid. Uh, and actually, Allgaier, a uh, pretty decent driver when it comes to road racing. So uh, I'll be interested to see what he can do here today as we're ready to go racing right here behind the 11 of Denny. Hamlin still winless on the season as we're racing from Road America now. Stage is very short in terms of the lap count. Only three laps here in stage one. Keep in mind though, this is an extremely long course. It takes over two minutes to get around. Uh, so, obviously longest laps in NASCAR. That's why that uh, lap count is so low. 20 laps is really just the count of the whole race here. Now as we get through turn one, Chase Elliott already clear there down into turn number two. Uh, and Elliott are already got with the, uh, with the two wins he's got on the season. So uh, very strong season so far for that nine car who looks to make it three today. Alex Bowman in the 48 machine, uh, one of the bubble drivers in the playoffs right now, has had a bit of rough luck on his side recently now as well with some failures and whatnot, specifically on tires. So uh, definitely got to keep an eye on this 48 and his progress here today in Road America. Now up into the left-hander of the inside of the 11 and the 48. We get them both now as we're going to jump up into P11. You got Suarez, Larson side by side here now as we go through the second left hand and we will clear that 48 Ally Financial Chevrolet. A few moments later, here we go up in front of that 48 car's teammate of Kyle Larson, who, of course, another driver still winless. Very surprising at this point in this 2023 season that Larson and Hamlin are both winless now as we get through the right kink. You see me looking back just to see what's going on. This, that is a very high contact point that can lead to big accidents. Everybody appears to get through there nice and clean on this first and opening lap. So, closing in on the Dover winner of Daniel Suarez, we're going to look up the right-hand side of him, and now we're going to drag Rice up through the little, uh, you could kind of call it the S section here, through the penultimate corner we'll go around the outside there, a little bit of oversteer, so I had to correct that, but we should be able to clear him down into the final turn, he actually breaks really late, goes wide we take the position now, up into the top 10 up into P9 to be exact, but on the run down towards turn 1 to start lap 2, Suarez actually had a very nice run, so I let him have the left side of the track, and we're going to go side by side into the corner, and actually Suarez is just going to straight up uh, do better than me in turn 1, actually I make a little bit of contact with him, and then I back out of it, letting him, letting him have it right there. Uh, but I think we've got pretty good pace in this WeatherTech 16 machine here today. That's going to be competitive enough to, I would say, get a top five. Uh, you can see myself fighting back to the left side of Suarez as we head down towards Canada Corner. Uh, as we approach the final lap of the stage, blowing right by that 99. So back up into P9 behind the uh, number two of Cindric. Look at the track uh, map, though. Chase Elliott long gone down the road. So uh, right now, yeah, good luck beating that nine car here today. Win number three on the season looking like a very realistic objective there for Elliott. Now you can see right here at Cindric, Harvick as well as Jensen Button. Although Button is in a Rick Ware machine, keep in mind Stuart Haas helps prepare that specific car uh, and as well uh, that's probably why we're seeing not only Jensen do so well but maybe Harvick do so well as well as they're kind of leaning off his experience now as you can see Suarez nearly uh, drove into the back of me on this final lap of the stage. Chase Elliott's already come through the final turn. He's headed up the hill, and Elliott is going to cruise through to a stage number one victory over Ross Chastain. Button, Harvick, Cindric, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Myself here, P9. Suarez is going to get that final stage point as we head up the hill ourselves. So yeah, two points here in stage one once we cross the stripe. I was pretty happy with that, honestly. You know, we started what, uh, a little bit outside of the top 10, uh, made up some ground early on in the first half of the lap, and then we made it past the 99 and got passed back, passed him back again. So now our teammates of Almondinger and Haley come up just short of stage points. Shane Van Gisberg in there, P5. So a great first stage there for the uh, driver of that number 91 for that special project with Track House Racing. Other teams as well, by the way, nobody coming into the pit lane. But there's other teams looking at for next season starting up their own Project 91s, we'll call it. Of course, 2311 Racing already has one with the 67. We will see Ko uh, Kamui Kobayashi in that car for the Indy Road Course now as we're going to get back underway for stage number two. But don't be surprised if you see other teams like uh, Penske Racing maybe entering a fourth car uh, as their Project 91 as well. And other teams might be joining in on this battle, uh, which is becoming an international battle that is so much fun to watch here. Down through turn one, though, in stage two. Same amount of laps as stage one. It was all clean and green 
green in stage one. Can we keep it the same vibe in stage two? It's usually stage two when the intensity and the drama and the physicality starts to pick up a little bit here with the AI. So we'll wait and see now as we're up on the back of this bush light Ford Mustang of Kevin Harvick. He's drag racing with the two of Cinder. I'm going to give this four a nice bump draft here trying to get him going ahead. I didn't want to force the three wide in this moment, but I saw he was going nowhere and he got cleared by the two. So up the inside we go uh, down into the heavy braking zone. Harvick into the bank of the two. And then I'm going to follow through as well uh, and just about get into the bank of the two. We force three wide, so he backs out of it and loses multiple positions. Not a very good start there for stage two for Cindric, who drops down to P10. We clear Suarez, so up into P8, our best running position so far up ahead. SVG side by side with the 17 of Busher. They all slowed up as he got cleared by the 17 car, so up the inside I go of Harvick again. Who well breaks me there, gets alongside Button, and now we're going to make it three wide with Jensen, and there goes uh, the 2009 Formula One World Champion a little bit backwards now as we continue around the outside at the four sideways we overcorrect it we save it but we go into the sand and now we're going to rejoin back on the track but the damage is not as bad as I expected we lose only three positions here as Kyle Larson is trying to look up my right rear hoping he does not send it he does not he banks out of it knowing the risk of going side by side into the kink he even gave up a spot to the two in the 45 as well of Tyler Reddick here now as we continue on towards Canada corner so P10 uh, to be honest I was pretty happy considering what happened there in the carousel with Harvick and now we continue on on the second lap of stage two trying to reel in the 48 the 99 and we would this is a section of course here right in the mid part of this track I can really get through there better than the AI and we got alongside uh, the Ally Financial Chevrolet and we're going to pass Bowman a little bit of a slide again in the carousel that's the second lap in a row we save it way better this time and move up into P9 Suarez showing the nose to Jensen Button there as they head down into the right kink and he is really going to go for it he's going to wreck himself Suarez into the concrete wall that slows Button's progress as well and Daniel Suarez a top 10 run is gone it's over we take P7 no caution as we have relaxed yellows here on the road courses now but that was a huge impact on a concrete wall for Daniel Suarez now uh, but he would continue on so thankfully he's all right and he's still racing here now only one injury uh, we have seen this season that was with the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. of course he missed three races while Carson Hosevar filled in for him impressed and got the call from Andretti as we know Andretti taking over Spire racing next season they are keeping Corey LaJoy on the team but bringing Hosevar uh, on board as well which means Ty Dillon obviously without a ride for next season. We'll have to wait and see where his uh, future ends up here. Now, final lap of stage two, P7. I was pretty happy with that. Uh, once again, you know, still making overall gains. Of course, the Suarez button little incident there uh, definitely helped. Shane Van Gisbergen again, P5 behind Busher, a bubble driver that we have to pay attention to. Uh, Bell Chastain Elliott, who's just in his own, uh, you know, postal code if you're Canadian like me or zip code if you're American. Uh, you, you can't touch this nine car today unless you wreck them, which, you know, if I have to do with with an opportunity late in the race, I will absolutely do if, if it would get me a win. Everybody's coming into the pits uh, for four tires feel. We're going to add a little bit of grill tape, make the car a little bit tighter, uh, but no repairs necessary here. I mean, we could do two seconds of it, but I really did not want to give up track position. We gain a spot in the pits, so we, up, we are up to P6 alongside the V8 supercar legend of SVG, Shane Van Gisberg, and we're underway here now for stage number three. Eight laps of racing to go. You got Jensen Button in the 51 Mobile One Ford Mustang just behind Harvick as well alongside as we head down towards turn number one. Elliot already just about clear of Chastain, but Chastain fights back, but it's not going to be enough. That nine car is just going to drive away again. A fun little note to mention about the Ford Mustang in this NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. So you guys know that Ford is getting a brand new car for 2024 for the Mustang and the NASCAR Cup Series will also be getting that new Ford Mustang. We are going to very likely have that new Mustang in in the game it'll be the same body but brand new decals that well replicate what you see on track for 2024 as close as possible we'll say though depending on the time of when ford in real life reveals the cup series mustang for 2024 it'll either be on track in our career mode next season for 2024 or it might have to be for season three in 2025 assuming we get that far in the career mode before the series dies i don't really know what's going to happen still uh but i hope you guys are enjoying the series let me know down below right now in the comment section what do you enjoy most about the series what do you think i could do better what do you think i could add uh for the future let me know now as i would love to hear your thoughts there uh as you can see uh running p6 pretty happy with the pace elliot's long gone already crossing the stripe just nobody has any pace for him chastain second place on bank is all right here together a big close 
closing gap right there on this 91 of uh, SVG as we go through the long sweeping right carousel. Now you got to be so patient through here, right about 95, 96 miles per hour. And then of course you throttle up here and get up towards that 150 mark as we head down towards the kink. But now uh, through Canada Corner, closing right up on the back of that 91 again of SVG here, coming up on the final six laps of this race in Road America. Wow, goodness gracious, I didn't anticipate getting that close. So we got into the back of them. You saw me lift right out of it trying to avoid any more contact here now. But uh, we just kind of got stuck here. It felt like a, a next-gen road race where you can't pass. Uh, you kind of get stuck and just you just wait for the cars in front of you uh, to make some errors and slip up and give you the opportunity to just have a freebie position gain. Uh, and it obviously wasn't really happening here. But you see myself trying to put some now pressure on this 91 car of SVG as we head down towards the kink now. And we're going to get such a good run. He goes a little bit wide. Here we go. This is the opportunity that we're looking for. Where we're going to go. He's going to block right in the middle of the track. We're going to give him a nice little shove to give us uh, both some more speed. But we're going to look up the right hand side into Canada Corner. We've completely outbranked ourselves. Christopher Bell, hold on. We've completely ran into the 20. Put him into the tire barrier. And that is a huge hit there for the 20. We continue on. No caution. But I just completely missed my braking zone. I tried to avoid all cars. Obviously, the 20 had nowhere to go. And I had no way to avoid the 20. Harvick, not a fan of what just happened. He runs into the side of us through the final corner. And now Christopher Bell, he's coming into the pits with the damage. We don't have to pit before the end of the race. So there he goes. It's going to be a rough ending for his race now. As you can see myself slipping and sliding out of turn one. Harvick's going to go through. We drop down to P6. We try to fight back into the right-hander. But uh, Harvick, uh, actually, is going to run into me. And now we drop the position into P6. A wild moment right there. And you see the radio message right under the rear view mirror. Christopher Bell uh, not thrilled uh, with what just happened. I don't blame him. I mean, obviously, he was an innocent bystander to me just out breaking myself. So here we are, lap 17, and, you know, he's, you know, way behind, not even with the main pack, and here we are running still P6 in threat for a win, depending on if a caution comes out or not, which has not happened today, and I'm not anticipating it at this point. We're coming up on three laps to go, and unless something, you know, dramatic happens, uh, like a car blowing up on the front straightaway, I don't think it's going to happen here as we exit the final turn, and there, and there it is. The car's blowing up on the front straightaway. This is 17 of Chris Buescher to the right side. Miguel Caution is going to fly. And Road America over time is going to be here. And now you can see we will be restarting P4. Busher, a bubble driver. Well, finally having a good race here after some rough luck. And, well, he is going to be out of the race. And now... We are going to be on row two alongside SVG, Chastain in second, Elliott first, Harvick fifth. We've got an opportunity, depending on how this restart goes, to win this race. So, here we are with a chance, a golden ticket if we get the lead to put ourselves into the playoffs. You've got to be very smart here at Road America. It's very easy to throw it away in turn one at this track. We're back underway. Two laps of racing to go. My idea was not taking it three wide, but pushing the one down into turn one, hoping he clears the fastest car on the track, so then it's easy pickings for me instead. We go down into turn one, and it goes completely against my plan from the looks of it so far. Chastain fights back, so hold on, and well, I'm trying to hold on. We're into the barrier. We've completely lost the rear end, and now the there it is. Our chances of winning is gone. I've completely thrown, aw thrown it away. Elliot got clear anyways of Chastain, so my chances of winning were gone with that as well. I wasn't going to be able to win either way because uh, Elliot was just too fast. But the damage is done. We're outside of the top 10. A huge slip out of turn one. And the tires, they were worn. And I knew that. And I was just pushing really hard, trying to, of course, get a good run down towards the next right-hander. Uh, and obviously, I pushed a little bit too hard and, and paid the price. I run into the back of the 11. You know what? I didn't touch him. I gave him a lane. So we continue on. Uh, and now we got Logano on our outside. We'll give him some room. We'll hold on to P13. He's going to continue, actually, to fight as we head down towards the right-hander, but just so frustrated with myself in that move there because I know it's just a, a, a video game, but I'm like, goodness gracious, Gary, like, how did you screw that up? Uh, we go around the outside of Byron, uh, and now as we head down towards the final lap of this race, Chase Elliott is already gone. It took him like half a lap before he was already disconnected from the rest of the pack. The pace in that nine car 
absolutely unbelievable. It's a Grand Slam kind of day here. Got pole, and he has won every stage. He's led every single lap, and now he just needs to hang on for three quarters of a lap, and he will get, what, a seven playoff point day because, of course, the stage point for the stage one and two win and the five playoff points uh, as well for the race victory. I thought for a brief moment, you know, we might be able to pick up those five playoff points. It was a bit unrealistic of an expectation, uh, but still, it is what it is now uh, as we head through the little right kink P12. We know we got Christopher Bell not very happy with myself, and I don't blame him either as we continue okay. alongside. Here goes Cindric actually backs out of it for whatever reason, so we'll move up into P11. Chase Elliott leads. It's no longer Ross Chastain, by the way, in second. It's the Trackhouse car, just not Chastain. Shane Van Gisbergen in his debut. Uh, not a street course like Chicago where he won, but on a natural road course that NASCAR drivers have experience on, and he's going to get P2 to Chase Elliott, who wins his third race of the season here. Up the inside of the 31, right into his quarter panel, actually. Now our teammate of Justin Haley, we're going to drag race, but Haley gets the edge. It's not even a fight as we head up the hill, down the front straightaway to cross the stripe, and we're going to cross the line and not even finish in the top 10 after what was a very promising day gone wrong at the end. Shane Van Gisbergen is where the eyes are. He gets P2 in his NASCAR Cup Series debut, and that is certainly going to turn some heads and maybe make his phone ring a little bit more here in the coming episodes uh, of this career mode. And I can assure you, that is not the last you have seen of Shane Van Gisbergen this season and for the future of this NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. Of course, he will be back at Indy Road Course. Uh, and then after that, we will find out his plans in that same weekend, likely, or the weekend after. We'll wait and see. But there you see two drivers now with three wins on the board. So... We still are uh, inside the playoffs even after that race. That went pretty well. Truex is now in over Keselowski, who was, of course, in the top 16 for so long. Keselowski now drops out. Ty Gibbs out by 12. Haley out by 14. Same for Bowman. Reddick out by 28. This bubble battle going into Atlanta in the next episode, which had some curveballs earlier in the season, could very well again, especially with a very broad and open pit window that can really be, uh, you know, a caution turn that race all around. So it's going to be a heck of a battle to the playoffs. That's going to wrap it up for me. I'll see you guys in the next one at, uh, at Atlanta. Have yourselves a great day.